Hello everyone. This is Spoiler Lab and today we will dive into the plot of the German thriller The Privilege. The film takes us to the home of the Bergman family. Finn, the youngest in the family, enjoys playing video games while his parents and twin sister are going to an important event. Before they leave, Finn's parents give instructions and ask his older sister, Anna, to look after her brother. The boy continues to play video games, not noticing that someone is watching him through the window. For a moment, the lights go out in the house. Finn takes off his headphones and realizes that something bad is happening in the house. Hearing the signal of the security system, the boy approaches the front door and sees that the system has been completely removed. Meanwhile, there is some noise coming from Anna's room upstairs. Finn calls his sister, but without waiting for her answer, he decides to go upstairs. With each new step, the sounds of struggle and screams become more distinct. Terrified, he freezes in front of his sister's door and at the same moment Anna runs out of the room. Her mouth is stained with blood, and her hand is clutching a bloody knife. She grabs her brother by the hair and orders him to open his mouth, but she is distracted by otherworldly sounds coming from all around the house. Anna tells Finn that they need to escape and quickly gets her brother out of the house. The boy notices that someone is following them, but they manage to get into the car and drive away. In the car, the sister asks Finn if he saw someone in the house too, but Finn is too scared to say anything. Having reached the bridge, Anna suddenly stops and pulls her brother out of the car. She climbs over the railing of the bridge and calls Finn over to her, assuring him that he will be safer next to her. The boy obeys and climbs after his sister. She breaks away from the railing and tries to pull Finn along with her, grabbing his leg. Anna tells him to stop holding onto the railing, but he pushes his sister away from him and she falls. Soon the police and Finn's parents arrive on the scene. Rescuers take Anna's body out of the cliff, and as Finn approaches his dead sister, he screams despairingly. At the same moment, Finn wakes up as a teenager in a doctor's chair. His entire body is covered with wires and sensors. Dr. Steinke comes up him and says that childhood trauma caused damage to his brain. They run a few more tests that show a 15% deterioration in performance. The doctor gives Finn new drugs and reminds him that it is a privilege to be in his family and tells him to never forget that. After visiting the doctor, Finn and his sister Sophie go to school. On the way, Sophie is intercepted by her boyfriend Ramin. Ahead, Finn spots his classmate Samira and shyly greets her. Their flirting is interrupted by Lena, Finn's best friend. During class, students are told about a parasitic fungus that penetrates the body of insects, multiplies there and establishes complete control over the brain of its carrier. During the story, Lena snatches Finn's phone and asks Samira on a date for him. Finn takes his phone back. But by the look on Samira's face, it seems like she doesn't mind going out with him. In the evening, Lena and Finn sneak into a classmate's party. Inside, everything that is typically found at a teenager's party was waiting for them chaotic dances, guys and girls disappearing to the bathrooms, and banned substances. Lena advises her friend to approach Samira, or she will do it first. A classmate gives Finn a stimulant. He takes it and begins to hallucinate. It seems to him that everyone is covered in blood, and Samira and Lena lean in to kiss. He faints and wakes up at home. The next day, Finn drives to the hospital to visit his grandfather before an operation. He asks his Finn to pray for his operation to be successful and for them to be able to live together a little longer. Returning from the hospital, Finn starts seeing hallucinations again. At home, he accidentally overhears his parents talking about his grandfather. Martin, Finn's father, worries that the old man doesn't have long to live. Yvonne says that their son is not yet ready for this and may not be able to cope. But Martin assures his wife that Finn will endure everything, as he is the strongest of their children. In the evening, Finn takes the pills prescribed by Dr. Steinke. After talking with Lena, he goes to bed. At night, he wakes up from the noise. He leaves his room and sees his sister downstairs, his parents in dark overalls, and strangers following them into the living room. To get a better view of the guests, Finn goes out onto the terrace and continues to watch what is happening. He is shocked by what he sees. Sophie is stripped of her clothes and seated in front of an elderly woman in a stroller. The old lady also strips and approaches Sophie to look at her body with admiration. Finn is armed with an axe and decides to protect his sister, but someone knocks him out. As soon as he comes to his senses, his parents tell him that he was sleepwalking again. Finn tells them what he saw, but no one believes him, not even Sophie. The next morning, Finn hears strange noises coming from his sister's room and decides to check on her. He sees how someone attacks Sophie in her dressing room and rushes to save her. But opening the dressing room door, he meets only the uncomprehending gaze of his sister. At school, Finn tells Lena what happened. At that moment, in the yard, Sophie yells at Ramin not to approach her again. The oddities don't end there. In gym class, Sophie's nose bleeds and she falls off the rope. At home, she assures Finn and her mother that she is alright. Ramin comes to the Bergmans to visit Sophie. Finn goes to open the door for him and notices how his sister, by the power of thought, attracts a cup to her. Sophie asks her brother not to let Ramin in, but he insists on talking to his girlfriend. Yvonne comes out and drives Ramin away, 
saying that Sophie is not well. In the evening, Finn receives a message from Ramin, in which he warns him about certain danger and offers to meet at the diner. There, an elderly woman passes by Ramin and winks at him as she leaves the cafe. He hears strange sounds coming from the car wash and decides to check it out. At the sink, he notices the woman from the diner lying motionless on the floor. He moves closer to her, but is thrown to the side right away. The woman's eyes turn pale and she begins to choke Ramin with a hose. Arriving at the meeting point, Finn finds Ramin's bloody body in the car wash. Then a monster appears behind him and he runs away from the car wash in fear. The police officers who arrived at the scene do not believe that Ramin was killed and claim that he committed suicide. Finn tries to show the correspondence with Ramin, but all messages disappear. The commissioner shows CCTV footage showing Finn entering the diner shortly after Ramin and hinting that he might also be on the list of suspects. Finn's father asks to be left alone with the commissioner, after which he informs his son that he has solved the problem. At home, Finn can't sleep after what happened. He is about to take his pills, but because of the light from his lamp he notices that there is something inside the capsule. When he cuts the pill, he discovers a worm inside. Finn decides to bring what he found to school, where the teacher tells him that it is a filamentous fungus that grows on corpses. She tells him to contact her friend, who can tell him more about this mushroom. On the internet, Lena finds information that witches use this mushroom in their rituals, believing that this is a gateway to the other world. At this moment, Samira comes up to her friends and says that she also drinks this medicine and asks Finn to work out with her after school. Later, they go to meet their teacher's friend. They are met by a man who wants 50 bucks for entry, to talk to his mother Elishka. Finn pays and later shows her the mushroom, and says he found it in the medicine the doctor prescribed for him. Elishka sits the guest down at the table and stares into Finn's eyes. He again sees the memory of the death of his sister Anna and coughs up something incomprehensible into the woman's handkerchief. Elishka says that they urgently need to save Sophie, but he does not believe her. Finn receives a message from the hospital and goes to see his grandfather. In the hospital, his grandfather tells him that he was once a priest and saved the boy from illness by performing something like an exorcism on him. Before he is taken to the operation, he tells Finn that people used to believe that demons lived inside a person, but now they consider it a mental disorder. Watching the operation, he hallucinates again. At home, Finn meets Samira and realizes that he completely forgot about his lessons with her. His parents go to the hospital and he takes advantage of the moment to perform an exorcism on Sophie. He is unsuccessful in seeing Samira out, and at that moment Lena and Elishka with their son Yuri come to his house. They decide to start the ceremony in order to finish before the arrival of their parents. Yuri sets up the necessary equipment to communicate with the spirit, and Elishka drinks a capsule of medicine and puts a scarf over her head. Yuri tells them to hold hands and to not look at the spirit for any reason. After several failed attempts, the spirit reveals itself and attacks Elishka. He tells them that they will all die. The lights suddenly turn on in the house and Finn's parents enter the living room. Elishka wants to finish the ceremony, but her son insists that they leave. Lena and Samira also leave in a hurry. Finn, despite being grounded by his parents, joins them. After he leaves, Sophie only gets worse. They spend the night in an abandoned building and realize that it could be the last night of their lives. The circumstances bring the three closer together and they make love. In the morning, they find out that Elishka and her son left in the middle of the night and there is no way to contact them. For lack of a better plan, they decide to go back to school and behave as usual so as not to arouse the suspicion of their parents. At school, Finn sees Leander, his classmate, run to the bathroom in a panic. He seems to have something stuck in his throat and is throwing up the same way that Finn had thrown up earlier at Elishka's house. Later, Leander climbs onto the roof of the school, slits his palate and jumps down, saying he needs to get out. He is later taken to the hospital and before dying, manages to tell Finn to look in the folder in his backpack. Meanwhile, Lena conducts her own investigation. She googles Finn's cure and finds out there's a drug launch today. She comes to the presentation, where she learns that they plan to put the drug on the market and that Finn's father is the CEO of the company. Lena leaves the hall and quietly sneaks into the freight elevator, which descends to the lower floor. There, she discovers many corpses, from which parasitic mushrooms grow, which are then collected by the company's employees. Taking advantage of the moment, she manages to escape. Finn and Samira examine the contents of the folder and learn that Leander is an adopted child. Samira tells Finn that it's nothing special since she is also from a foster family. Searching further through the folder, they discover that Finn and Sophie are also adopted, and Samira's parents sold her as a child. Leander's father comes up to them and tells Finn that he was also adopted and that it was his grandfather who saved him from an illness in his childhood. The man says that it is a privilege to be one of the adopted children and the medicine they drink will change the world. Meanwhile, Finn's grandfather dies in one of the wards. Finn wants to get closer him, but a doctor comes up behind him and injects him with a sleeping agent. He then wakes up tied up in his house with Samira. Drive, 
Steinke appears in the living room and takes Finn to a secret room where his whole family is waiting for him. It turns out that the bodies of those present were occupied by demons and they have been doing this for more generations of people. As if they were under a spell, the family tells him that they prepared him well and that he is now ready to let someone special into his body. Finn notices his grandfather on the bed and realizes that he will have to give his body to him. His mouth is held and an incision is made, and the grandfather is revived with a defibrillator. At this point, the demons of the possessed bodies come out. Finn's grandfather jumps on him and begins the transplant process. But then Lena bursts into the room, pushes the old man off of him, and throws a torch on the adults who were doused with gasoline earlier. They manage to escape from the house, but Sophie catches up to them and asks Finn to help her. He says that this is no longer his sister and asks Samira to step on the gas. At the end of the story, the trio find themselves back on the bridge where it all began. They see a billboard advertising the drug and realize that they can no longer trust anyone. Samira lags behind them and turns to us with pale eyes. Then we realize that the demon turned out to be much closer to Finn and Lena than they thought. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Share your thoughts about the movie in the comments. See you next time.